Hello, everybody. This is Chapter 14, Dearborn Essentials of New Jersey Real Estate. We're doing the key terms. So just as you already know, we're going to say the word, give you a little bit of time, and then we're going to go into a little bit of a deep dive, a little bit of an explanation. This is how you should be doing your flashcards, guys. So without further ado, adjustable rate mortgage. Adjustable rate mortgage. This is a plan with interest rate changed either up or down periodically. So basically what this is doing is this. It shifts the risk and the reward of a changing interest rate over to the buyer. So an adjustable rate mortgage is just going to take that, again, reward or risk factors, and it's going to shift them onto the buyer. So either the buyer at the adjustment time is going to have the interest rate go up or down. So again, the buyer is either going to make out on it or not make out. A mandatory clause, a mandatory clause. And this states that a buyer getting an FHA loan, also a VA loan this would apply to, can rescind the contract if the appraisal is lower than the purchase price. So basically what happens is this. It is saying that the buyer has no obligation to move forward if it appraises for less than the sales price. So it's a basically a safety net for the borrower, the buyer, to be able to back out if this property doesn't appraise for the value that the sales contract is written for, okay? Amortization schedule. Amortization schedule. List of each payment, interest, principal, remaining debt. So an amortization schedule basically shows how each payment is going to go towards interest, principal, and what the remaining debt would be. And to amortize a loan is basically to gradually pay it off with interest and principal. Amortize loan. Amortize loan. Kind of gave you a little sneak peek on the last one. That is a repayment plan, including principal payments, and it gradually reduces the debt down. So, bubkiss reduces it down to nothing. So a fully amortized loan is one that is going to just gradually pay off over the term of whatever the loan is. Assumable. Assumable. So a mortgage that can be taken over by the next buyer. Now, assumability has... So some of your textbooks might read differently in regards to assumability. I've seen some uh, textbooks say VA loans past 88 are not assumable. And the fact of the matter is that what changed in the late 80s and also for FHA loans, just so that you guys know, is that you now have to qualify for the loan. So you can't just willy-nilly have anybody come in and assume it. They have to actually show that they have the credit worthiness to take that loan on, right? So assumability was something that, again, if your textbook flat out reads that like a VA loan past the late 80s was not assumable anymore, that is incorrect. The, the new borrower has to prove credit worthiness. Now, also with assumability, we want to talk a little bit about the alienation and uh, due on sale clause because the alienation due on sale clause cannot be present in a loan that is also assumable because the two cannot coexist, okay? Because the due on sale clause basically says that the lender has the uh, capabilities of making the full amount due on sale or on transfer or on alienation. And if it's assumable, then the lender could not exercise that right, right? Because if it's assumed, then the lender can't say, well, the full balance is due. That, no, that, that's not something that the lender can do because, again, if it is assumable, then there is an outside chance that that might not be able to go through like that. So that's why the alienation or due on sale clause will not be in a loan that is assumable. Bi-weekly mortgage. Bi-weekly mortgage. And this is a repayment plan, 
equivalent of 13 monthly plans. So this is not, and people always get this confused. They always say, oh, so you're paying the full loan amount every two weeks. No, that's incorrect. You're actually having the uh, the, the loan payment, the monthly loan payment in um, every month. So basically what you're doing is you're paying a half each every two weeks. And what happens is that would equate to 13 full payments. And what happens is the 13th full payment, what that does is that actually goes all towards principal at the end of the year. So basically you're making one extra full payment that's going towards principal at the end of the year. So it helps you pay it off quicker. Uh, a lot of people do this. A lot of people sometimes also just put an extra payment at the end of the year and they just do, uh, you know, put it right towards the principal so to pay off the loan quicker, okay? BPO, BPO, kind of like Bachman Turner Overdrive, no, <laughs> bad joke. Uh, so BPO is a written estimate of value by a real estate licensee. So a couple of important things. When would this be something that we would use? This is something that they use in certain situations in lieu of an appraisal. The reason they do this is because sometimes an appraisal is not necessarily needed. However, some sort of market value is needed to be given, okay? So what happens is it's much cheaper for a bank or a lending institution or something of that nature to order a broker price opinion or a BPO rather than a, uh, a full-fledged appraisal, much cheaper. And also what's going to happen with this in New Jersey, you really do need to write down that this is not an appraisal. Also, you cannot accept payment for a BPO from anyone other than your broker of record. Still same thing in New Jersey, right? Still the same thing. Budget loan. Budget loan. That's a loan with monthly payments, including property tax and insurance. So they're going to probably escrow those things, okay? Depending on the circumstances. Now, there's times that you might not. However, what happens is they're probably going to have some sort of reserves on hold. And this is going to be a loan that's going to make your monthly payments, principal, interest, as well as tax and insurance, okay? So it's going to put it all into one lump sum. Buy down buy down. This is the payment of extra points and a point is 1% of the loan. Remember that point is 1% of the loan. This is a payment of extra points in return for a lower interest rate. Now, typically the buyer will choose to buy down the interest rate if they're paying a buy down point or something of that nature. It's typically going to be on the buyer. However, I don't want you to get confused if they're asking you questions that have to do with the um, the closing disclosures and debits and credits to the buyer and seller, and they say the seller pays a point, and you're saying, well, that has to do with the buyer's loan. So why would the seller pay a point? There are circumstances, there are situations where the seller may pay a point on a loan in order to buy down the interest rate for the uh, for the borrower. There, there are circumstances, I mean, look, I could get into the weeds of it, but there are circumstances. So if the question gives it to you like that and the scenario is that the seller's paying a point on the loan, don't question it and don't say, well, that doesn't make sense. Sometimes what you need to do is this, do not overcomplicate the question with things that you might be adding to it to get to a practical, right? To, to have your mind make sense of it. Sometimes it just is and read the question exactly for what it is, right? Cap, cap. Is this like a baseball cap stew? Kind of. It's a percentage beyond the interest rate that cannot be raised at adjustment. So it's basically a percentage in which you cannot raise the interest rate above at the adjustment period on an arm or an adjustable rate mortgage. Ceiling, ceiling. Now this has to do with, um, th this is going to have to do with what we just talked about before. It's similar, very similar. 
okay? And this is the highest interest rate ever allowed on a specific adjustable loan. So the ceiling, what I always think of is this. Cap you wear on your head, and that's a little closer to the ground. So I always say that at the adjustment period, that's what we refer to as the cap. And then the one above that, kind of the one that oversees the whole entire loan, is the ceiling. And the ceiling is always above the cap, right? So, and I'm not saying that that's always the situation, but that's the highest interest rate ever allowed on a specific adjustable loan. And that's when we're talking about our adjustable rate mortgages, right? Whenever the interest rate is going to adjust, okay? Certificate of reasonable value. Certificate of reasonable value. And this is super simple VA appraisal statement. So this is the appraisal statement that you're going to get for a home that has a VA loan that you're applying for. The Federal Housing Administration. Federal Housing Administration. So the FHA, okay, they're a U.S. agency that ensures mortgages to protect lending institutions. Yes, so they they ensure mortgages okay and what happens is this on a conventional loan you're going to have something called pmi private mortgage insurance because that's usually typically private lenders giving that money right it's conventional when you have the fha insured loan you're going to have to pay mip or mortgage insurance premium and what happens is this you're going to have to pay an upfront uh portion of it and then you're going to have to pay an annual but the annual is actually broken down on a monthly level. However, what I'm going to tell you is this. You don't have to know that much about it for the test. You just need to get a broad stroke of the pen. Exactly what I just said, that little snippet, probably all you need, okay? Next one is going to be an FHA 203B. FHA 203B. It's a low down payment insured mortgage loan insured by the FHA. And it's typically probably like your most common type of FHA loan is an FHA 203B, okay? Index, index, index. This is the Guide to National Mortgage Trends. It's used for adjustable rate mortgages or ARMS. So the most common index used for adjustable rate mortgages, just so that you know, kind of like a little tidbit of information I'm giving you here, is going to be one-year treasury bills. Um, so it's going to be the index on one-year treasury bills in the United States. So the index is going to be based off that for most of the time. There's obviously going to be outlying situations, and you don't need to get into the thicks of it. I mean, heck, if you want to have fun, you could Google some of this stuff. But you don't need that for the test. Not needed. Not necessary. Not at all. Interest. Interest. This is the charge for the use of other people's money. So when someone gives you a loan, okay, and you're going to be paying that back over time, what happens is they need to they need to see some there needs to be some benefit in it. There needs to be some skin in the game for them. And that skin in the game that is interest. So this is basically rent on money, okay? Rent on money. Loan to value, loan to value ratio, also referred to as LTV. And this is the percentage of the property's market value that may be borrowed. So basically the loan to value amount is how much of the loan are they going to be, you know, allowing you to borrow, right? So um, that is basically, and also the loan to value amount dictates if you need to have PMI, right? Private mortgage insurance for any conventional loans that are going to have an LTV of uh, greater than 80%, right? Greater than 80% LTV, you're going to have to pay PMI, which is private mortgage insurance, okay? Um, and it all depends, again, on the value, which is going to be based off an appraisal typically. Margin. Margin. This is the percentage charged by a lender above the index rate. So if the index rate is 2 and they charge 4%, then the margin's 2, okay? They're getting an extra 2% on top of the index, all right? 
Next one, New Jersey Home and Mortgage Finance Agency. New Jersey Home and Mortgage Finance Agency, also referred to as NJHMFA. Woo! And I didn't put down what that was. No, let me tell you what the NJFHAMA is. Basically, the NJHMFA is an organization that is going to, it's New Jersey specific, obviously. And I think that's why I left out the definition, the key term on this one. So what happens on this is the NJHMFA is going to be a situation where they're going to give you certain programs and benefits to first time home buyers. Also, they target, um, they have target areas and typically it's inner cities. Um, and what they're going to do is if you're purchasing a home in an inner city, they're going to give you, uh, there's some first time home buyer programs. There might be some affordable housing options that they're going to be a part of. So if you go to the uh, government website, it gives you a lot of information of how to qualify for certain things, what some of the target areas are what they do. And again, this is a New Jersey specific agency, and it really has to do with fair uh, uh, affordable housing in some target areas. That's what they refer to them as. And it's typically inner city places you know, around the state that um, they're targeting for, um, you know, people to move into and uh, to uh, basically uh, support the growth and, uh, you know, uh, further development of those areas. So the next one is P-I-T-I. Pity. What is that? Pity is your mortgage payment, including interest amortization and certain expenses. So it's usually principal, interest, tax, and insurance reserves, right? That's what pity or P-I-T-I is. Point. Point. That's 1% of the loan. Can't get much simpler than that. It is what it is. Private. Mortgage insurance, PMI, private mortgage insurance. I talked about this a little bit before. And this is protection for the lender on a low down payment mortgage. Again, conventional loans, okay, that have a greater than 80% loan to value. Okay, so if it's 80.001, that's greater than 80%, okay, and they'll have to have PMI. The borrower will have to take out PMI, which will be a monthly premium. Okay. Straight loan. Straight loan. This is a mortgage payment of interest only. So when does this happen? This is usually typically this is not a first time uh home buyer, you know, your primary mortgage kind of situation. This is typically uh, a home improvement loan where you're like, hey, you know what, I'm going to take out the interest only. And then when I turn around and sell the property, I'm going to, you know, have the payment due then, right? So it's something that um, this is usually for a periodic time, and it's just interest only, and then the principal is just all going to be due at once. So that's what a straight loan is. Next one, kind of talked about this a little bit, target area, target area. What's the target area? These are neighborhoods in which the state wishes to strengthen the neighborhood stock, like strengthen, you know, people moving into the area. And target areas are really going to be uh, inner cities that are targeted through the NJHMFA, which is that New Jersey Home and Mortgage Finance Agency. So I talked about it a little bit over there. It's affordable housing, and also there are sometimes first time home buyer grants, New Jersey specific, obviously. Next one a VA mortgage. A VA mortgage. Woof. This is not a lot of words for a lot of words. It's a loan guaranteed by the federal government. It's guaranteed by the VA. And what they actually do is they actually guarantee the top 25% of the loan. Um, so you actually have no down payment required. Um, it's only for owner-occupied properties. And actually, a little tidbit of information. I I'm going to kind of drop some knowledge bombs on you. Ready? The service requirements, first, you have to be honorably discharged, right? You have to have a service status of honorably discharged. And your service requirements are 90 consecutive days of wartime duty, 181 days of peacetime duty, or six years in the reserves, okay? Equity. Equity. What is equity? And that is 
the difference between current value and money owed. I owe you $10, okay? But my fancy, fancy uh, pen collection is worth $30. So when I sell it, I'll make 20 okay? Yes, I do have a fancy fountain pen collection, okay? So if anyone wants to talk to me about that in the comments, more than welcome to. <laughs> toolkit. Toolkit. What is a toolkit? We're talking hammer, screwdrivers. This is an explanation of financing terms. So this is actually created by the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. And what it is, is it's basically just a, a pamphlet that's going to allow you to, um, it's on their website, and it allows you to just kind of go through and understand some simple, easy, easy to understand terms. And this is really geared towards uh, borrowers. So as a licensee, you could actually give this to borrowers and uh, potential buyers. And what they'll do is they'll be able to uh, give you some, give them some information, some insight on the uh, financing terms that they might not be super familiar with, okay? Might not be super familiar with. Rate lock. Rate lock. This is when the lender agrees to hold an interest rate for a certain period of time. Um, so typical rate locks are 30, 60, 90 days, okay? And sometimes the rates go lower and the buyer's like, oh, I, I want to I wanna change. Once you lock a rate, you lock a rate. Um, so typically you lock it so that you safeguard yourself from the interest rate going higher, right? Um, but it could have the adverse effect as well. So depending on the situation, you might want to speak with your uh, lender, your loan officer. And I always suggest getting a professional's opinion. You know, what should I do should not be something that is decided by someone who is a uh, lay person, who is a lay person. But guys, I want to tell you something. I want to let you know a little secret. That's it. Chapter 14. Hope you had a great one. Hope you enjoyed this one. I will talk to you guys soon.